Welcome to part two of Adobe Captivate software simulation. Uh, if you've come to this video first, you might want to click up here to watch part one. This is part two where we've already made our recordings and we're going to do a little bit of editing for you. So in part one, as, as indicated, we've uh, done our recordings. In part one, we created a software demo, which is just the type of thing that a user would sit back, relax, and watch the tutorial. And we simultaneously recorded an assessment as well. And if you take a look here, I've got both of those uh, demos and assessments open right now. Let me take you on a little bit of a tour of what everything is. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's get a little bit closer to this particular first slide elements here. Typically with software simulation, really all that's happening is the software, Adobe Captivate, is capturing and remembering all the mouse clicks and keyboard typing that goes on. Starts off with a screen capture of the background, and that becomes the background of the slide. And then these additional elements are added to the slide. Now, you can edit these and make better choices than perhaps what the software is capable of. So in this example here, we're demonstrating to the end user that the first step in this process is to click on the name field. And to do that, this particular caption has appeared. And you can place that wherever you think is appropriate. You also can edit the contents of that because this might be a little bit cryptic in what it says. So we can type in, click the name field. Keep it simple, I always say. Now the highlight box is helpful to draw attention to the actual field that we want the users to click on. And of course you can edit that as well. One of my favorite things to do is actually to use fill outer area, which rather than filling in with a color like it's done here, fill outer area will change to darkening everything except this field, and it's a neat effect. Although I wouldn't want it for the entire duration of the slide. So using the timeline down below here, uh, you may want to adjust the length of time. And if you're adding narration to this slide, which I highly recommend, you can time it so that perhaps uh, the highlight box occurs when the narrator says name field. So that way it's lined up and of course it's drawing attention to that particular field. Typically, when you start the first slide of a software demo, the mouse button or the mouse location starts in the upper left hand corner. I don't actually think that's a very natural place, so I prefer to move it down more towards the center of the slide. The other thing I do is I take a close look at the timing of the mouse movement itself. Typically, a mouse movement is going to be a lot more fast and a little bit more deliberate um, and less exaggerated than this one is here. You can choose to change the pointer path to be a straight line to go from where you start straight to that point there. That might look a little more natural and also shortening the amount of time that it's uh, going to that particular spot is helpful as well. So I like to put the, uh, the mouse movement towards the end of the slide and uh, typically the text caption might appear when the narration starts, but I typically like to run it to the end of the slide as well. And maybe the highlight box goes somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Um, but you have to play around with this and see what looks natural. So you can preview it right here on your stage by clicking the play button and see what that looks like. So let's change that highlight box a little bit. I, I prefer to darken it down. And let's do this here and we'll put a red outline around it and just see how that looks there. So let's just preview this again. Imagine that there's some narration explaining, click the name field. So that's good. That's a nice straight line. Some people don't prefer the straight lines. They feel it looks a little too computerized, but I find it's the length of time that makes things uh, seem too long or too short, depending on the circumstances. 
The rest of this demo is going to be pretty much the same. Now on this slide here, we've it's assumed that we've successfully clicked on that, that uh, field, and now it's going to simulate typing information into that uh, particular slide there. There actually is no need to have any mouse movements on this slide because this is just about the typing. So you actually can remove the mouse movement by selecting it from your timeline and just hitting the delete button and that will get rid of that mouse movement. Incidentally, when you go from slide to slide, the mouse movement will start wherever the mouse was last clicked. So it should look very natural, and even if you delete the mouse movement from here, uh, it's going to adjust the mouse movement on the following slide to start from wherever it was last left off on slide one. With the typing uh, element here, uh, you might want to add some instruction that, you know, type in the, the, the name, your first and last name, into this field. And you can do that either with a text caption or a smart shape. It, the choice is up to you. I am going to shorten this particular slide so it's only as long as the typing and that way it moves much more quickly to slide number three. Here we're moving on to the next highlight box and again you can duplicate what we've done before. Too much in the highlight box though you, you might decide that maybe we're seeing the highlight box too much you could actually get rid of it. It is strictly an optional item, and you can include the, the caption uh, and the narration, or you can just have the narration if you wish. Uh, and that's, of course, up to you to record or to uh, create using text-to-speech. I think uh, setting the mouse to click the beginning of the field makes a lot more sense. And again, I'm going to shorten that time down so it moves a little bit faster. I'm going to move that mouse movement to the end of the slide. And then, of course, uh, you know, and we can tighten this up uh, as well, making the entire, uh, the entire slide much faster to move along, because really all that's happening here is a mouse click. And again, like before, we're typing something out. Again, we don't need that mouse movement. It's unnecessary. So let's just get rid of that and just have the typing simulation. So that's pretty much most of what you're going to see on a demo. One thing I want to draw your attention to, though, is uh, this particular slide here where I've got, as you can see, instead of a mouse click icon next to the film strip icon, we've got a video camera icon. And what's happening here is that what we've done is we've scrolled this, this particular web page down for the user. If you wanted them to perform this task as you're recording this particular demo, it might make more sense to simply click on the lower portion of the scroll bar rather than selecting it and dragging it down as I've done. But the end result is that it does create this full motion recording of the scroll effect. And we can preview that by just clicking the, the play pause button down here and see how that works. Now, because that might come as a surprise to your end users or your learners, you may want to make a comment or put a uh, smart shape up here or a text caption that explains that what's about to happen is we're going to scroll the page down for you. And that way they're not surprised. And of course, at this point, you have the option to uh, preview the entire project as you go. And you can also publish when you're ready. Now, because this is a demo, there's no interactivity for your users to really be involved with. So you can publish this one of several ways. You can publish this uh, as simply uh, an e-learning, an HTML5 e-learning file. In this case here, maybe it's just something they need to view to complete. But you can also publish this another way as well. If you decide to, say, upload this to YouTube or Vimeo, you can actually publish this simulation or this demo as a MP4 video and then upload it to whatever video streaming service that you wish or maybe even just to a company intranet. So that option is available to you as well. Let's take a look at the assessment. Now, the assessment is quite a bit different than a demo. This requires the user to be interactive with this particular software simulation. 
So on this first slide here, we have a click box rather than just that mouse movement and a highlight box. So we're expecting the user to actually click here. This is the first task that we're asking them to perform. And you can edit the timing of the slide. And of course, you could add narration to tell the user what we're expecting of them. Also, the click box has points uh, awarded to it. So if the user successfully does this, this contributes to their score or to their quiz results. And um, in this case here, we have a failure caption. Uh, there really is no need for a success caption because success will be that when they click on here, they'll, they'll have the ability to continue with this particular project and continue to slide two, which is the next step. Now, it's hard to see, but what's happening here on slide two is we have a text entry box. And uh, of course, it captured Paul Wilson as the correct answer uh, because that's what we typed when we recorded this assessment. You could change this, but just remember on the subsequent slide, you're going to see Paul Wilson typed in there. So they could, in theory, type anything you want or anything they want. If they type it in lowercase, it's going to obviously replace it with Paul with a capital P and Wilson with a capital W. You can decide whether you want to validate this information or not. And I guess the real thing here is how important is it that they type in exactly Paul and then Wilson? Could they type in John Smith or anything else? Uh, are we evaluating their ability to spell correctly? If not, then, you know, maybe don't validate the input and don't necessarily uh, include it in the quiz. Just tell them to type in Paul Wilson, and if they type something else, so be it. And then we continue on with the next click box and so forth and so on. And again, you might want to include narration. You certainly can use text-to-speech if you wish, but again, the preferred method would be to record uh, some real human voices uh, directing them to take the next step, and on and on it goes. Now, again, uh, going back to that full motion recording, again, that might catch them off guard because, of course, once they type in ABC Company on this slide as the company that they work for, uh, it's going to proceed to this full motion video slide. And the, again, if they're expecting to interact with this, especially with assessment, uh, they may get confused by this. So maybe on the caption here, you've got some space on the on the slide. You can add, uh, let's say, a text caption here. We'll resize it and maybe, you know, we'll just say the simulation down the page for you. Something like that. Just something to make it clear that, you know, you're about to be, uh, the, the simulation is going to uh, scroll down for you and uh, accommodate uh, the next area of the form for them to fill out. But that's pretty much it. And again, you got to make these decisions as to, um, you know, which of these elements are going to contribute to that final score, include in the quiz. And, uh, you know, it's up to you. Of course, again, uh, I always sort of think in terms of the life or death situation. Um, you know, if filling out this form, uh, if you're thinking about employees, for example, if filling out this form uh, means the safety of all personnel, then obviously you're going to be very accurate and expect accurate results. You know, if it's just a customer service form or if it's just a feedback form, you know, and it, it's, it's not as crucial to the lives and safety of all involved, then maybe you just need to validate that they're clicking on the form and filling it out. So again, like before, once you've got all the edits made to your software simulation, of course, you can preview it and make sure that everything works according to plan. But uh, if you're ready to move forward, you can also publish this. Now this, in this case here, because this is fully an interactive uh, software simulation, while you could select video, uh, it's not really going to be very uh, useful to you because of course, 
all of that interaction where we require users to click on fields and fill things out, all of that will be lost once you publish this as an MP4 video. But suffice it to say, you know, you can certainly publish this as a regular e-learning uh, assessment and put it up on your learning management system once you're done. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.